Vance Archer and Logan Jones. Vance is the former Lance Hoyt with a haircut to make him look completely, completely normal. Completely generic. Yeah. It's, a, it's amazing how plain they turned him into. They did at least cover his tramp stamp. What is with these people? I don't know. Who thought this was a great idea? I don't know. It, it, it opened with A. Washington and Tony Atlas backstage making jokes about Renner Center furniture and stuff. Said he's going to get new furniture with real leather. And, what are uh, you talking about? I'm still on Vance Archer. This is before the match. Oh. There's a segment backstage you apparently fast-forwarded through. But, uh, yes. With it, who? It started with A. Washington and Tony Atlas. Oh, I didn't give a shit about this. Yeah, Vance Archer was also there. But uh, he also suggested for that for the A. Washington show, this was not his exact words, but basically what he said, Tony Atlas needs a drop board. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he does. So, anyway, Vance beat Logan. Logan and Jones was a great name. It's actually a much better name than Vance Archer. He won with a suplex and a reverse DET, which I could have sworn used to be Kozlov's finisher before he got the... Actually, yes. Yeah. So anyway, then we had Zeke and Kozlov against Christian and Yoshi Tatsu. Vance Archer and Jason Blackwell. Jason was billed as being from Sheffield. Everyone cheered. And Vance did a suplex and a reverse DET. Kozlov's old finisher. And then... I just got to say this line. <laughs> This involve where Vance Archer yes. came from. Josh, Josh Matthews, everybody. Josh says that Tiffany discovered Vance Archer in Japan. I read that sentence over and over again about 16 times, and it was funnier every time. Yes. The idea that, first off, that Vance Archer was in Japan and just tearing up the rings. That's number one. Second, Tiffany... Was scouting Japan? Tiffany. Tiffany was scouting Japan and she found and discovered Zach Archer and brought him to WCW. This was an amazing bullshit story. That was an amazing bullshit story. We also had the wacky inset promo here where Vance in his second ECW match said, and I quote, Who is Vance Archer? My opponent is about to find out. <laughs> and there was an uncomfortable pause, and then it cut away. As there always is, yes. yes. And uh, as we're watching this squash match, the announcers compared Blackwell's chances of winning to a salmon swimming upstream. Mm -hmm. Salmon do that by the thousands every year. Yeah. It happens all the time. But apparently Jason Blackwell is no salmon. He lost. He's no salmon. He is no salmon. Sean Salmon, maybe. Van Archer beat a random geek. He was stiff as hell, was picking up legit, pulling him up by the hair, and then he killed him. Punched him by the back of the head. That was a good one. Yep, yep. Punk met with Christian backstage. Vance Archer and Alex Reynolds. No heat at all. Archer looks so stiff. Mm -hmm. One with his move. Someday I will want these minutes back. He is amazing in that he can squash a man and hit him really hard and... You know, it's supposed to be looking devastating, and the whole time he looks really bored. And not in that, not in the way that this man is no match for my skills, I need higher competition bored. Just, I hate pro wrestling bored. So, this is a complete fail. And it's hard to fail doing a squash match, but this was a fail. Now we had Vance Archer and Tommy Dreamer. I'm sure Vance Archer is a really nice guy. He looks, aside from his height... He looks completely generic. He looks like any guy you'd see anywhere. So yeah, not just in wrestling. Yeah, in any mall. The library. Yeah, the the, the bookstore. Not the... even the mall. I pictured the people in the mall sticking out a little more because you got to dress up a little bit to go to the mall usually. So this guy is out there and he has a match with Tommy Dreamer and it was fine. This was like the first competitive match that uh, Vance Archer had. He had to sell a little bit, that sort of thing. Anyway, the point is, he won, but Dreamer showed so much more in this match than Vance Archer did. He did. That is saying something. That's crazy. It's bad. It's Tommy awful. Dreamer looked like Ric Flair in this match here tonight. I I watched the, the opening promo, and it was long, but I watched it, and it was okay, and I skipped, and, you know, skipped the commercials, got to this match, and this match began, and I went from average wrestling viewer to bored out of my mind in record time. I could not believe this thing was like 45 seconds old and I was miserably bored, desperate to fast forward all of a sudden. I, I cannot fathom how fast this got boring. And it went through and Vance would hit a move and then look at the crowd for a while. And then he'd do like a kick or a stomp. 
Look at the crowd for a while. Then Dreamer, Dreamer finally made his comeback. Hit a flip dive off the apron. Vance caught him without using his arms. That's a good one. And Tommy Dreamer then hit a frog splash. And after all that, Vance hit him with his move and won. Yeah. Woohoo. I don't want to see him anymore. She announced Christian will be the guest commentator of the ECW homecoming finale. He had a battle royal. CM Punk versus Yoshitatsu versus Shelton Benjamin versus Matt Hardy versus Evan Bourne versus Ezekiel Jackson versus Vance Archer versus Kane. The announcers were mentioning something about Vance beating up Sheldon at some point. I, I have no idea if this ever happened, if it happened on Superstars. I It may well have happened on ECW. I don't remember it, and I don't care. So Vance got in the ring, and Shelton jumped him, even though the match had not started yet. And everyone's watching this brawl as Shelton Benjamin and Vance Archer have this fight, and they're standing there not doing anything, and then Evan Bourne turns and shouts, Yoshi, get him! That made me laugh hard. So Kane came out, he tossed Evan Bourne in five seconds, and then seriously, nothing happened for about six minutes. It was seven dudes doing typical battle royal spots for six minutes on television. It blew. Christian was out there. He noted that last time he was doing commentary, they had asked him stupid questions. So this time, he brought them questions to ask him, and they then ignored him entirely, and so he kept going back to it peevishly. Christian seemed so frustrated and miserable with his life right here. He hated being the champion of the show. He hated working with his, these geeks on the mic. He hated watching these geeks in the ring. He just hated everything. And the worst part was, by bickering with the announcers, he did not seem cooler than them. He seemed as lame as they did. Yeah. So that was a fail. So, Shelton and Vance... Let's cut to the chase. Ended up with Zeke, Zeke winning. <laughs> it's Zeke and Christian at the pay-per-view. I suspect that did not improve Christian's mood at all. No. So there you go. This show sucked. This was a terrible wrestling the program. The penis jokes were much, much more entertaining. Everyone go to dictionary.com right now. Yeah, I guarantee it. Or just write your own. That'd be better than ECW too. There, there were about seven thousand names for uh, the the dong in that list. So I'm sure if you wanted to uh, email the the uh, the curator of the dictionary, then uh, let's play a song here. <laughs> we got to seriously get the show going. Speaking of horrible comedy, Shelton Benjamin wrestled Vance Archer on television here. They actually said that Vance only had one loss on ECW, and it was the hands of Shelton. I have absolutely I, no memory of this. Moreover, I don't care. No. So they had a In fact, match. if you can imagine, if you can imagine a Vance Archer-Shelton Benjamin match, guaranteed you were already asleep. It's just guaranteed. <laughs> this match was... Useless. <laughs> it accomplished nothing. Absolutely useless. Shelton Benjamin against Vance Archer. Horrible. Mm -hmm. So Shelton at one point took the absolute worst Bret Hart bump in the corner I've ever seen. Oh, God. We had the finish. The finish was fucked up. <laughs> the finish. You're spending too much time on this match. Basically, Vance Archer tried to do a roll up and grab the ropes. But he was so obvious about it that the ref had to break it up. Yes. And so they immediately tried again, and they put his foot on the ropes in a different position, and somehow the ref had to pretend he didn't see this one. This was a fail in every conceivable way. Yeah. I mean, there was not one single way that this was not a fail. Right. Horrendous match. That led to Shelton Benjamin yes. versus Vance Archer in what I guess was an Extreme Rules match. They just said, no DQ, no count out. Seems extreme. The, when they announced, they did not announce this main event until right before Christian's promo, and I my jaw hit the floor. The main event of the next to last ECW ever. I almost fell asleep listening to you recap it. Shelton Benjamin versus Vance Archer. Mm -hmm. Think of all the men. <laughs> well, mean, at least this wasn't the last one. I, I guess so, but this is this is why it's dead. This is all that's left. All of the men that have traveled through, some of them almost literally giving their lives to this company, and it has come to Vance Archer versus Shelton Benjamin in the main event. Shelton did a promo, basically just well, he tried cheap pops, that the, sort of thing. The, the crowd kept interrupt, interrupting him with uh, cheers for the New Orleans Saints, and you have to admit, Brian, that the Saints winning the Super Bowl is more interesting than Shelton Benjamin. Probably. Right. I don't know. They had a match. It was a hardcore match. I, I don't even have the passion right now. I, I already talked about this with Lance, but the idea that 
You're going to do a no count out, no disqualification match. I know where you're going with this. You're going to announce it's no DQ, no count out on ECW. And as soon as someone gets busted open, you stop the goddamn match and have a geek come out and tape the dude up. Why would you even book that kind of match? I mean, again, if this were real yeah. and you were afraid of blood, why would you ever book a match where weapons you could were allowed? With bladed weapons. <laughs> the Sharp, stupidest, pointy things. The stupidest fucking thing I've ever seen. And the best thing was this cut on Shelton Benjamin's forehead. There is not... If this cut had happened in a UFC fight, they wouldn't have even mentioned it. No. It was so minor. And... Uh, that. They wrestled. Shelton, to his credit, he did realize that this stoppage to examine the blood, uh, the, the, to examine the cut, was brought the match to a complete halt, and so he immediately lit into Vance Archer to try and get the crowd into it, and it briefly worked. And uh, Shelton, at the end, won with Pater. The people seemed mildly interested, so I can't say it was a complete failure. It was all right. He, he uh, hit a blockbuster and the Pater. One, two, three. Totally clean. Doesn't look good for Vance's future. No shit? No. God bless the guy, but he's shown nothing in ECW. I mean, he has shown literally nothing. This is a main event, I guess, to see if he had it. And I guess we'll see what happens here. But clean losses, ECW, I'd realize it's to Shelton. But I don't know. Don't uh, don't see I don't see a bright future right now for, for uh, Vance Archer. A few weeks ago, I referred to Tiffany and Kelly Kelly as the team from hell. I must apologize to them. The real team from hell came out. Kurt Hawkins and Vance Archer. Yeah. The less entertaining guy from the Majors Brothers and the tall guy from the Rocket Rave Infection. Truly a nightmare team. The Majors Brothers? Was that their name? They were the... Well, I think it was. They were, they were brothers and I then they were the, edge the edgeheads. Heads. They were the edge geeks. They were brothers before that and then they were Kurt and Zach. Anyway, Brent Roberts and Jeremy Barner were their opponents and it was a squash and then Vance Archer and Kurt Hawkins cut a promo saying there were 22 days left on their contract. They were going to make an impact. Blah, blah, blah. I wonder if there, like, really is 22 days left on their contract. And if they don't look good in about two weeks, they're going to be ending up on impact here pretty soon. Entirely possible. I'd be fine with I, that. I, I, will, I have a little faith in these men, but they, they seemed okay in this squash. They're certainly better than when they went down to Florida. I'll give them that. You did skip one thing here, which I understand why you would skip. Vicky cut a promo on Vance and Kurt in Spanish, and they left. That's right. They have 15 days left to make an impact. This was their chance on this show. Sucks to be them. She didn't even mention their full names. She just mentioned Vance and Kurt. And I remembered Kurt Hawkins and completely forgot Vance's last name. Yeah. Then we had the SmackDown Battle Royal. Winner this- getting the spot in the four-way. Ray, Dolph, Kofi, Drew, Kane, Finley, Kalen Croft, Trent Beretta, Luke Gallows, Vance Archer, Chavo, JTG, Kurt Hawkins, MVP, Christian, and Chris Masters. I don't even Chris know where Masters. they got all these guys. I just wrote down the people who surprised me. Like, Chris Masters still employed. Fin- Finley tossed Christian and MVP after yes. not being on TV for months. For months and months. The, no one went out for a while, and then Kane and Luke Gallows simultaneously started tossing dudes right and left. Kane backdrop one dude buster onto the other. It was a very poor catch. He nearly died. I have no idea what they were thinking. Kane on a final four of Kane, Lou Gallows, Rey Mysterio, and Kurt Hawkins. This seemed like a mistake. Like someone was supposed to be left in there and they got dumped earlier. Yeah. Kurt was quickly dumped. The uh, masked man, or as Todd Grisham called him, the hooded stranger, <laughs> ran in. They had tried to double-team Kane, he and Luke, but he fought them both off and eliminated Luke. So now it was Ray and Kane, and they actually had a pretty good match while it lasted until finally Ray turned a choke slam into Irana and won. MVP and Christian versus Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder. I wrote Ryder. Vance Archer. Whatever. <laughs> Zack Ryder's his old partner. Anywho, we are informed here that these uh, gate crashers have been granted an extension they are now on their second contract. Yes, so- let me let me explain this. All right. So, like, two months ago, we were told they had a few weeks left on their deal. They wrestled week after week after week. And then we hear that they've been re-signed. And then we hear, no, they just signed a 30-day extension. They're still on probation or temporary what? status or something. I- Hold on a second. Mm-hmm. These two goofballs were worthy of a 30-day extension? Apparently. They should either be re-signed or fired. <laughs> What, the, what about them was on the line? I guess they are still on the fence. Oh, still on the fence? Wow, you guys, no one cares about you. 
Uh, you're really not all that good. But we're going to give you 30 more days to prove yourself. It is kind of comical about how there's, you know, there's an entire show that goes on for months about a group of guys fighting for one contract to get in. And then meanwhile, guys like Hawkins and Archer show up and just get jobs. And the Usos show up and they just get jobs. Not to mention they announced it because of the, the I forget what the exact term they used, because of the destruction they had caused on SmackDown, they were getting deals. I was like, kind of a lesson is that That, that is there? also a good point, yes. The, it's like the, the, the WWE GM. Have you seen his Twitter? The WWE GM has a Twitter, everybody. I have not seen the Twitter. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. <clears throat> anyway. They had a perfectly acceptable TV tag match. Uh, Vance is getting really, really good at... He, he used to have great difficulty setting up his reverse DDT. It would take him forever. Now he's starting to do it really smooth. It looks much better. Oh. So, Kurt, may they take it down? It's been suspended. There's a picture of a bird with the uh, the circle and the line through him. Maybe no just, tweets. Maybe he just killed a bird. That's sad. So, yes, they, they pinned Christian with the DDT and level smash, and then they laid out MVP for good measure. So, I guess they still don't have jobs, though. It would be hysterical if they had him beat everyone and then didn't give him contracts and just jobbed out their own talent. It was WWE Raw GM was his Twitter, and the first post was something like, the NXT rookies will be dealt with accordingly for their actions on Raw. And I thought, so they'll be given a raise? Because <laughs> they kicked Bret Hart's ass and got a contract out of it, so... Now that they beat Vince McMahon's ass, wow, should really get a push. Kurt Hawkins, Vance Archer, and Dolph Ziggler, real team, everybody, against MVP, Kofi, and Christian. My first sentence, first two sentences in all capital letters, Kurt takes horrible bumps, leave your fucking feet, you lazy fuck. <laughs> this is my, what my Friday nights have come to, watching Kurt Hawkins take bumps. You didn't watch this Friday. Actually, I did. Oh. Wow. So tired of watching it Monday afternoon while Raw was going on. Vance Archer was actually a star in this match as he stood on the apron and screamed such advice as, Finish him off and slam him harder next time. Hey, he was into it. Yeah. God bless him. Kofi fucked up his sunset flip to just an astonishing degree, and Matt Stryker referred to it as a beautiful roll-up. Yeah. Turned into a six-way, Kurt hit Kurt, or Kofi hit Kurt with the uh, wacky kick. MVP sent Vance outside. And then Christian just hit the kill switch for the pin. Yeah. Ziggler managed to take a 360 bump <laughs> off a kill switch. Way to go, buddy. There's also a point in here where Dolph hit a fame asser, and it was not the finish. And by the way, later in the show, Ziggler demanded an well, intercontinental title well, shot. Yes. So the, again, Why? Again, they built He's it up here. He's done nothing but lose. By having him lose clean. There were six men in this match. Only one of them was a loser. It was Dolph, and he's getting the title shot now. This show sucked. This show is sucking a lot lately. Then we got Kane. Christian and Matt Hardy against Vance Archer and Kurt Hawkins. Christian walked out on Matt. They said that Christian was sending a message about how it was every man for himself at the pay-per-view. Fans did not see it that way. They booed Christian. The heels pinned Matt. This. It was there. Was not fair. It was exactly what happened. And as far as the weirdest part of the show, I went with the burial of every young guy with who has not had a chance yet to be even a mid-carder. The Hart Dynasty, both of them buried. Caval, buried. Hawkins and Archer, buried. Buried, 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 buried. They were are, are they buried, employed buried, still? I, th th at this point, yes. Wow, that's astounding, actually. But yes, uh, the, the they have... All five of those... Go well, Caval won't get fired right now, but... You know, Hawkins and Archer, if, if you do not watch the show... Big Show beat them both in a handicap match in like three minutes... Uh, Stryker was in particular burying Hawkins because he made an executive ride in the back of the car and then talked about how great he was for 20 minutes. Did he ask, where do people work five days a week? <laughs> At least I didn't say it was better than Shawn Michaels. That's true. So I got that over Kurt Hawkins.